What's up everyone, Erod212 here with my uh, latest haul video. This is going to be my New York, uh, excuse me, my East Coast Comic Con haul video, as well as uh, some books that I picked up recently along the line. So I'll, I'll go through all of that. Uh, we'll start off with East Coast Comic Con, what can I say, but uh, great event. Got to meet up with the New York Warriors over there. You know, that's always a fun time, standing in line with those guys shooting the shit. I mean, we all go our separate ways when we're all looking for stuff that we want, but we also help each other out, uh, get things signed, and, you know, look for things that another guy might like. Uh, got to meet some great guys. I met Jimmy C. there on Friday, uh, bullshit with him for a while. Reaper Tate was there. So, you know, just good to see those guys over there. But uh, main reason to go to that con more than anything else is, uh, like uh, Jeff Johnson and Marky said, more to meet the creators there than anything else. I mean, they had a phenomenal line of creators there this time. Uh, some legends that, uh, you know, you don't see in one place. Actually, legends that I don't see at New York Comic Con. Um, you know, I don't, I don't recall ever seeing Joe Sinat at New York Comic Con or uh, Larry Lieber, you know. And those guys were there as well as uh, Joe Giglio was there, you know. Some of the greats, you know. Joe Giglio is basically the Joe Sinat of D.C., you know, he inked that Flash run, the Green Lantern run. He did so many, some bat, classic Batman stuff. He inked so much of that stuff that, uh, you know, just amazing. Just amazing to talk to some of these guys. Um, the star of the show was Jim Stalin with everything going on with the Thanos movie and everything like that. Uh, he was there Saturday and Sunday, and his line was tremendous. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get in there a little early and uh, was second on his line. So I uh, got a good fan interaction with him. And uh, he was super cool to talk to. Um, most of the books that I submitted, I'll, I'll show pictures of them, but uh, I, you know that I got signed. I'll show you guys pictures of them, but they were submitted to CGC or CBCS, uh, depending on what the books were. All my autograph books were submitted to CBCS, and uh, the only one I have is this here, and uh, it, it's one of my favorite covers, and that's why I got it. Uh, it it's a lower grade. It's the only reason I didn't submit it, but it's Fantastic Four number seventy nine. And uh, I got Mr. Sinat to sign that book right there. Uh, and he's got beautiful penmanship. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing how uh, these older gentlemen, I believe Mr. Sinat's 91 years old, have phenomenal penmanship. Nowadays, nobody writes in script anymore. So, you know, the old guys just, just have a flair to them. Uh, pretty, fa pretty fun interaction while I was online there. Uh, one of the customers before me had the first published artwork that Joe Sinat had ever made. And he, he was like a fanboy just geeking out, looking at this. And uh, he was showing it to Roy Thomas, who was in, sitting right next to him that day on Friday in the booth right next to him. Uh, just a great interaction. Saturday, Stalin was sitting there and Roy Thomas came over to just greet him and hug him and talk to him about the movie. Um, like I said, I, I was number two online, so very friend friendly, you know, just talked to Stalin about his feelings about the movie. He said he has to see it at least four or five more times before it sinks in. Just, you know, what parts he created, what parts he didn't create that were ad-libbed or from different movies and different, you know, different titles. Um, but just really cool talking to him. Uh, a funny, funny thing and we, was, we were talking about, it, and I was, you know, I was explaining to him or saying to him how, you know, non-comic book fans are loving this stuff but don't realize that this was created over 20 years ago. And he said, it's funny I said that because he had an interaction with an individual who, and he told him that a movie was coming out with his creative work. And when he told the guy the movie, the guy was like, no, that's a, that's a new Marvel movie. He goes, yeah, but I wrote that over 20 years ago. So, you know, we, we take for granted that we know all this stuff, but the fans don't. And for it to transcend into something that the fans can enjoy, you know, stuff that we've loved forever, I guess it just shows that, you know, we weren't the nerds or the geeks of the world. We were just ahead of our time. You know, in my opinion, but um, didn't buy too many books at the con, but um, I did get this really nice copy of Fantastic Four, number 91. Uh, I got this for 10 bucks, you know, so I, I couldn't pass up on it. Uh, cleaned it up. It's going to need a press. It had some more, more dirt issues than anything else. So for $10, I, I'll take that any day of the week. Um, I know a bunch of guys were talking about uh, looking for specific books out there at the con and, and Reaper Tate was talking about how uh, Green Lantern, the first uh, John Stewart 
has uh, shot up dramatically. It's funny because I was looking and specking on that book there also. And uh, I paid for my copy, uh, I want to say $90 last year. And a copy in below standard to that, way below. Um, it had flaring to the back of it. It, it. You know, it had stacking issues and everything else. Was going for 135 and a copy in the grade that I had at approximately, maybe even like a half point to a point lower, was going for 175 So that book has jumped. Uh, there's a lot of hype on that book. Book that there's no hype on right now. Everybody's jumping on Eternals number one. Uh, I picked up a couple of copies, and it's a, it's a must-buy. But the books people aren't jumping on are Eternals number seven and Eternals number nine. And these are just specs on my opinion. Um, but this has the first appearance of four of the Celestials in here. Number seven, I believe, has appearance of four different ones also. So there's, there's a possibility that some of those characters along the line will be part of the Eternals if they come along in the movies. Um, if you can find them on the cheap, pick them up. I got this for $3. Uh, got this one for $3. And I found this one for a dollar. Uh, nobody had number seven. I went through all bins in there. Nobody really, really had number seven. Uh, did buy one big book, though. Was walking through, talking to a dealer that I speak to on a regular. I buy from him every year. Uh, you know, he's a fair guy, reputable guy. And uh, he had a book that I've been looking at for a while, and it caught my attention. We started discussing, you know, the condition of the book. He had just picked it up in Chicago with a collection he bought. And he had it priced at, I'll tell you the price, he had it priced at three fifty. dollars um, I looked it up. I looked at the book, and with the pressing and everything else, I'm hoping for an eight five at least. And, and an eight five, this book is going for about four seventy five, almost five hundred dollars. So, big uh, reduction in there, worth me purchasing. And uh, it's this beautiful, beautiful copy of Hulk 180, first cameo of Wolverine. Uh, a really clean book. Back presents really nice also. The book is, is sharp. Uh, it has one little impact thing on the bottom that doesn't even really break color. Uh, you can see it probably there. But just a really, really nice book. Pressing clean could probably do this book a lot of justice. So uh, that was my big purchase. It wasn't a planned purchase, but uh, just couldn't pass up on it. Uh, the possibilities of that book pressing out even higher are, are, are good so uh, if I can get a 9 on that book I'll be super happy um, but that was all I bought there but I did get something there that I want to share with you guys um, let me show you this here let me just... so I, if you guys saw my uh, Big Apple book, uh, Comic Con video you saw that I had um, got in touch with an artist by the name of um, Hyung Sung Lee he goes by Kree's Art and it's Kree'sArt.com and he had done a Green Goblin uh, commission in one of the jam pieces that I was doing on a, on a Black and Farian. So uh, while, while speaking to him there, I talked to him about getting a bigger jam done. And uh, let me take it out and I'll show you guys. So uh, we came to an accord on a price and he told me he would have it ready for me for New York Comic Con, which he did. So uh, this is what I got here. Um, and I'll go through it, but that's going to be Banshee, Cyclops, Phoenix, uh, Wolverine in the center, Storm in this corner here, Nightcrawler, and Colossus. Uh, he did the layout for me, and I let him pick one character. He decided to go Jim Lee style on Cyclops. And then um, while at the con there, I brought this over to Billy Tucci. And... Uh, I know Billy Tucci draws the female anatomy very well. He did She and quite a few other characters. He, he can do Witchblade and everything else. So uh, I, get, I brought this to him and I let him pick his character. The minute he saw the Phoenix, he jumped on it immediately. He said he wanted to draw the Phoenix and he wanted to draw the Phoenix fire behind her, which uh, I just think came out spectacular. Just amazing. I, I was super, super happy with the work that he did for me there. So my plan is to, uh, every con, I'm going to try and get one artist to do a rendition of a character there. I'll try and let them select the characters if they want, um, if they have no choice, and you know, based on their art style, 
I'll try and get one each. But uh, just something new to play with when I go to the cons. You know, gives me something else to, uh, to interact with the artists and stuff like that. Um, some books I got from my LCS. I got Amazing Spider-Man number 797, the second print version, and 798 was also there for me. So I cover price, I'll take them. With today's books, um, there were two books that I really, really enjoyed a lot. Um, the Deathstroke variant, I, I'm liking the way Deathstroke number 31, I'm liking the way DC is doing these, uh, giving it basically almost a virgin variant look. Um, Jerome Pena did this cover and I, I just loved it. I thought it was great. So I, I had to pull a copy of this. Uh, that's the second Deathstroke book that's had you know, spectacular covers. Uh, Matina did the last one. And then uh, Carrie Andrews did, I believe that's his name, did this book and I just loved it. Uh, I mean, that is just a spectacular cover there. Super, super, super nice. So uh, I picked up two copies of it. Just had to. I mean, it was just, it was that nice, man. I, I, I loved it. I just couldn't pass it up. And uh, let me just show you what else I got here. Um, I had also picked up Hunt for, Hunt for Wolverine, which is a new ongoing coming out now. Finally bringing Wolverine back into the fold with Marvel. You know, Wolverine's my guy, so uh, I had to read that. Um, picked up the Chetto Young Gun variant for it, uh, which I like. I like uh, Chetto's work. He does some really nice work. And then uh, the McNiven 1 in 50 uh, version was part of my pull for that week also. So I was super happy. And big shout out to Comic Book Jones. Thanks, guys, you know, for running a great shop. Sako's always doing the right thing by his customers. And, you know, he's fair. He, I, and I mentioned it before, you know, those are all raffled to his customers and then uh, randomly inserted into your bags, you know, into your pull list. So you, you can't go wrong with that. You know, that, that's a $25 book all day long right now. Get it for cover price. Uh, I, I won't, you know, bulk on that. Uh, I also ordered from uh, DCBS, which I haven't ordered in a while. But um, some of these... 30th anniversary variants for Venom, I kind of like. So if I can get them for cover or below cover, I'll pick them up. Um, In Huck Lee did this gorgeous one for uh, X Men Red. Love that. Thought that was really cool. And then Javier Garone did this cover, which I really liked also. This one here, X Men Blue, came out really nice. Um, they'll never be the original Venomized covers, and I understand that. I'm buying them more for just the artwork, just the covers. Just I, I I've done some of the other run. If they attract my attention, then I'll pick them up immediately. Um, this one I really like. Uh, Todd Knock did this, and uh, you guys haven't followed Todd Knock. He's got some great artwork, so I, I think he did a really nice job there. And then uh, the yin and yang type of version for Venom number 164. Uh, all new Wolverine number 33. One that I really liked a lot was um, Mike Mayhew did this cover. And this is um, for Weapon H number 2. Nice work there. Yeah. Another uh, cover that I really like by Ian Huckley, Ian Huckley excuse me, uh, is Avengers No Surrender, Avengers number 690. And right now his variants are going for nothing. This guy does some great, great work. I mean, he's just a super, super artist. Uh, bought this just for the cover. And that's uh, Avengers number 690, Mark Brooks uh, cover. Really, really nice. Uh, was able to get another Chichetto. Infinity Countdown, Venomized Variant. And then, uh, Connecting Variant for 799. 
all in all some nice books great time at the con um great time hanging out watching the warriors do their videos it inspired me to get my videos jeff johnson if you haven't seen his video go check it out he put it out today walkie 316 put out his video today and you know um hopefully within a couple of months i'll have some books to show you from cgc and cbcs i got jim stalin to sign my um infinity war and also uh first shang chi um that was that was a nice book because him and roy thomas i got both of them on that one uh bagley was there bagley was super cool and uh bagley signed my 361 and the first spider carnage cover from the low print run so you know those were the books that i went after uh, sanat did a, a fantastic four book for me and then i helped out a friend of mine you know fellow youtuber who uh wasn't in the area and i got a bunch of books signed for him submitted a couple books for him through cgc and i'm mailing out his books tomorrow back to his house the ones he didn't want cgc so you know that's what we do we help each other out in this community you know i mean it's good to interact with all these other guys you know a guy from boston you know a guy from florida he might be able to get you that exclusive that you're not going to be able to get at your con that's what this whole youtube community to me is all about it's the, it's the fan interaction but it's also the interacting with each other and you know we we have common interests let's help each other out instead of all this nitpicking cat fighting who's got more subscribers who's got more this or that that's all bullshit bro you know what just just have fun with this but you know that's my rant and uh that's my badass piece, if I do say so myself. I love it. I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. To me, it's awesome, and it's going to be even better when it's done. Uh, the plan is to get that penciled by all different artists, then get inked by an artist, and then get colored by an artist. Uh, I'll have three separate and frame that. So, you know what? Might be a thought for somebody who wants to do some original artwork. All right? Well, until my next video, peace.